team. I got a great episode for you today with Leanne Tui. This was a great one. Very excited for you to watch it. She taught some great lessons today on what it is that we could do to live our best life. Some of you may remember Leanne. She uh, was played by Sandra Bullock in the movie The Blind Side years ago. But more than that, she's a great philanthropist and a great businesswoman. And I hope you sit back and enjoy this show. And if you do, make sure you share it. Enjoy. I'm excited to have you on today. I, um, you know, I, I love speaking to uh, high achieving women and I enjoy, enjoy, you know, sharing great stories. And today we get to share your story. Good. Well, which, thanks which, for having me. I'm excited about it too. That's great. Yeah. I, I think this is a question that many women would want to ask you. And uh, the question is this, you know, what did it feel like to have Sandra Bullock play you as a character in a movie? That doesn't suck, does it? You know, that's I know, I know. Funny. Like most guys are like, oh, I wish I had Brad Pitt and and you pulled it off. And Sean <laughs> uh, had uh, Tim McGraw. So, you know, we had nothing to do with that. I, yeah. I wish I could tell you that I said, oh, I want Sandra Bullock to play me in the movie. But unfortunately, it, we had nothing to do with it. We had nothing to do with the movie. And we were just very blessed and lucky that, you know, Pee Wee Herman could have played Sean and Lord knows who could have played me. So it, we were very blessed that it landed on some great people that really, even outside of the Hollywood world, they're very philanthropic. They're givers. They're very plugged into the community. Mm -hmm. They're very like-minded like Sean and I, we had more in common than not. So we felt very fortunate that that's who, you know, played us in the movie. And I, I think that if I could have gotten to pick that's I, I would, that would have certainly been one of my choices. But it wasn't. But she's uh, Sandra Bullock's an amazing uh, individual, and she is very passionate about causes, and she believes in making a difference. And uh, she's very involved with the American Red Cross and just numerous organizations that every single day move the needle and make a difference. So I feel very fortunate that you know, we had people like that that were playing us. Yeah, no, it's very cool. A few weeks ago, I, I spoke to Rudy, Rudy Rudiger, the real Rudy from the movie Rudy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and we had a great talk and we talked about like, you know, these movies, sometimes, you know, they, they become who we are in many ways because, you know, that's how people know of us. But for you, how, how have you dealt with that? Has that been a positive thing? Has it been a negative thing? You know, it depends on the day, depends on the mood of my children, the weather forecast, you know, it's just <laughs> it's an ever moving part. And um, like I said, would I have scripted some things differently in it? Yes. Did I have that opportunity? No. Uh, it, the, it, it, this started out as a little newspaper article in the New York Times, and that's truly mm. all that we were involved in. And then from there, it morphed into its, its own life. And it's people all the time will contact us and go, oh, I've got this great story and I want to uh, you know, make a movie out of it. How can I do it? I have no idea. I mean, I, you know, I couldn't tell you that process if you had a you know, gun to my head because yeah. we didn't have anything to do with it. And honestly, when this all started, it was, you know, it was like, oh, this is going to be just like a made for TV movie. It, no one envisioned this. No one expected this. This was never on a spreadsheet or, mm. I mean, it was just like, well, and the reality of it is you have no idea how many movies or books are sold to become movies and they never become a movie. Mm. Um, Michael Lewis, who actually penned this and was kind of the person that was responsible for all of this. He wrote the newspaper article. It all started with him. And he said to us when this all started and the, he ended up, he wrote the newspaper article, then he wrote the book, the blind side, which this the blindside book was not about us. Our story was like one little small piece of that book. Right. It was more about the evolution of of football and and positions in football and that type of thing. And then when 20th Century Fox bought the book, the person that they wrote to take the adapt make it to an adaptation to a movie, he chose to tell this family story out of it. It could have been so many other things. And like mm. I said, at that point in time, it was out of our hands. We had nothing to do with it. And, but it's just, you know, you, you look at it 
you step back after it's all said and done and you go, how did this happen? And it's just almost perplexing how it got from sitting in our living room talking for one hour to on the main movie screen. So I'm always, when people ask me, I'm like, I don't know. I, you yeah. know, figure this out yourself. Cause I, 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 there's no instruction manual for this. You know? Yeah. I feel like there's not a, there's not a lot of instruction manuals for many things. You know, I, I, one of the things I do now and I love is it, you know, interview, you know, and have conversations with folks like yourself that, you know, that have had uh, great achievements in life. And whenever you ask, Hey, how, how'd you do it? There's always this like, I don't, I don't totally know. Like, you know, I was just living my life and all of a sudden things kept unfolding and evolving. Yet today, you know, everybody wants this hardcore plan. And, I, and that was one of the things I wanted to talk to you about today. I mean, you, you sort of brought it up, but, you know, whether it's in your business or your personal life, are you somebody that's just overly planned and rigid or do you let things happen well, and unfold? I, I kind of, we live by the theory, play the next play. Okay. And, uh, you know, you can't, you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, whether it's in your personal life, your business life, I mean, whatever it is, whatever the genre is, you really, you don't know what's going to happen because one situation could go a million different directions. Hmm. And so we've always just lived by play the next play because you can't do anything. I mean, yeah, you can tweak it, and, but you really can't do anything about what has happened. Right. You just need to move forward. And and so that's kind of, that's kind of, you know, our mantra, we live where our feet are and we play the next play. And so I'm always a big plan B person. I, you know, I tell my kids, you better always have a backup always, every single day, you better have mm. a plan B because you don't know what's going to happen and you can have it all scheduled and fixed. And just like right now, if you and I, the electricity could go out, there's a million things. Anything could happen. Anything. <laughs> yeah. So play the next play. You just, you just got to go on and that's how you got to live with it. And if you get bogged down with, with that one, then, you know, you know, if something's going to pass you by, you're going to miss it. There's uh, things that could happen. So that's kind of, Yes, I, I'm a list maker and I'll make a list, but I have no, it's not like hardcore fast. You know, I, I can do something before something else. I'm a quick juggler and let's just make it work. You know, yeah. let's just make it work. We, that's 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 kind of, and, and that works for us. You know, for some people it may not, but for us that works. I like the outlook on it, right? Let's make it work. That means you're setting an intention that it's going to work. Exactly. Something's going to work. Yeah, got got to stay positive with it. We're we're all about positivity. I tell everybody, leave your negative vibes at the door. Yeah. So how, you know, how do you keep how all... do you keep that up? How do you keep that? You know, again, I mean, uh, we all know that there's a lot of negative folks out there. There's a lot of negative out there. But how do you keep yourself peak? How do you keep yourself up? I try to tell people that are around me every day, be so positive. The negative people don't want to be around you, and <laughs> that's my big thing. I mean, just worry that just be so positive and uplifting and inspiring that the negative people go, God, I don't even want to be around her. You know, yeah. ah, she's just Pollyanna, po you know, whatever you, you label it, you name it. But I mean, that's just what I think we should be. I mean, because we've gotten into such a negative, nasty point. Um, there's mm. just, you know, bullying is at an epidemic level. There's just, I mean, so much that you can just nitpick and it's awful. And, you just get so bogged down with it's just people are mean spirited and unkind. And I don't get it. I, I just, yeah. I don't get it. I mean, so I'm all about, if you can be anything, be kind. And if we would just live by that, I mean, if people would just be kind, I mean, it would just fix and change so much, just so much. Yeah. And I, I just, I don't understand how we've gotten to this just nasty point in this country, in this world, yeah. but we have, and, and, and I think the, you know, positive people, we got to rise up, man. I mean, we yeah. got to rise up and lead by example and do the right thing. And if we don't, it's, I think it's very scary as to where we will be and, you know, down the road. Oh yeah. How do you navigate away from those people? Because, you know, some people say I'm very positive, but I have these people in my life that I, I have a hard time removing their family, their, you know, they've always been my friend for a long time. Like, how do you navigate around these, these folks? You know, nothing <laughs> is forever except heaven and hell is kind of my opinion. So, okay. um, I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I, you just got to remove yourself from that. And I mean, if you choose to live in it and, and stay in that, then I mean, you know, it's choice. We all make choices. I mean, everybody's, you know, your choices define who you are. And if that's, but that's what you choose to do. You can't do it. But I mean, if, if there are, the, you know, people that, 
let's say it's your parents or whatever. I mean, like you said, you're kind of, there are certain things that, I mean, I just love and hug and kiss and cuddle and ooh and goo and, mm, and just, you know, I mean, you just, you just irritate them. I mean, I, you know, SJ <laughs> irritates me. So I just irritate him, you know, so yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I know that just sounds like such a little cliche and she doesn't live in the real world, but I live in the real world. Trust me. I do live in the real world. Um, but it's just, you just have to just, you know, just be positive. And when you be around them, smile and be happy and don't, don't let them, you know, bring you down. You, if you can't be the person that brings people up and, and, and you can't, you know, rub off on them, then you don't need to be around them. I mean, if, if you're becoming more like them, then they're becoming like you. Then I tell people, I mean, you got to cut back. You got to go. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Leanne, where are you from? I am from, I'm born in, I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. Okay. And, um, and we, that, that's our primary home and we're there a good bit, but Sean's businesses are down in Florida. So we spend a, a vast amount of time in Florida because that's where, you know, his businesses are. So, but we are from Tennessee and um, I'm proud to be from the 901 and that's, <laughs> you know, that's home. And if when people say, we're, you know, where's home, home is Memphis. Okay. Got it. Cause I know some people we would be wondering, they know where my accent is from, but they may be wondering where yours is from. <laughs> yeah, it's from Memphis. I tell, I tell people God talks like this. You know, that's what I say. <laughs> He's Southern like I am. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm from Memphis. Uh, I went to school at Ole Miss, so I have Mississippi uh, roots as well. So I, I'm, I am as Southern as Southern can get. Sweet tea and I, I'm all things Southern. So. Okay. You know, it's funny about Ole Miss. It's funny you say that. I uh, I coached one of the coaches that well used to coach there on the baseball team, and he just left and got a head coaching job somewhere else. But he gave me all this Ole Miss gear, and whenever I wear it around, I mean there is an Ole Miss faithful out there like no other school. My God, there is, there is. There's, I mean, I, of course, I'm biased. I, I I love Ole Miss, but it's a unique place. It's a it's a very unique spot, and it's hard to explain if you haven't visited there. But it's a Oxford, Mississippi is a wonderful town. Um, the Grove at Ole Miss is is like none other on game day. It's it's mm-hmm. just it's not about the party. It's about the people because everybody wants to go. Let's just big party this. They do have a great time, but it's about the people and the camaraderie, and uh, it's just a special place any day, but especially on game day. And yeah. The base, the facilities are wonderful. Uh, educationally, it's a great experience. I could go on and on. I, I'm a big proponent, and, I, and I'm a big. Our, our youngest SJ has been at several schools. He played uh, Division One basketball at Loyola, Maryland. Uh, he had his fifth year of eligibility left. He transferred to SMU and played Division One football and got his master's at SMU. And then he worked there for a year and then he worked at the University of Arkansas for a couple of years and then at Liberty University. Okay. And now he's the director of football operations at University of Central Florida uh, in oh, UCF, yeah. UCF with Gus Malzahn. And so we, we between SJ's journey and then Michael and Collins uh, and then mine and Sean's, I mean, Sean, uh, you know, was an All-American athlete at Ole Miss. And between all of that, we've seen there's great schools and everybody should be passionate about your school. So I'm certainly not saying that no, that everybody else's school is not great because we have seen with, uh, especially with SJ's journey, we have gotten to look behind the curtain in a lot of these schools and it's, it's their school. But yeah, there's a lot of Ole Miss faithful out there. And when you have on an Ole Miss shirt, I mean, I have been, all over the United States. And even, I mean, I was in Israel walking down the street and I had an <laughs> Ole Miss shirt on. I heard someone say, hotty toddy, which is kind of our welcoming cheer. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm in Israel. And, and I'm like, hey, you know, <laughs> so it is pretty cool. It just kind of gives you goosebumps. How about that for the power of a brand, huh? I know, right? That's uh, good. Amazing, amazing. So for you, one thing I, I'm learning very quickly is that, you know, you're direct and you're very uh, convicted. Where did you get this style from? Where, where did it come from? You know, both my parents, but my father was retired military and then he was a police officer and then he was a United States Marshal. And my mother was just a homemaker, but just very uh, grounded in her faith. Mm -hmm. But my, you know, my my dad was, I, I was raised, you know, very, you know, like, don't live in fear, take a risk, do the right thing. Uh, you know, if you don't speed, you won't get a speeding ticket. You know, st- it, just all the cliches you can imagine yeah. from uh, if you were in a military family at all. I mean, every morning I woke up, just time to get up, it's time to get up, it's time to get up in the morning. I mean, <laughs> I think every day of my life from the time I can remember till I was probably 18 and left for college. 
uh, and I adored my dad. He he um, he left us way too young. But so I think just between my parents and then I met Sean very young and he had, had two great parents that were that believed in making a difference. And they believed that all people had value and that you should do whatever you could anytime you could anywhere you are. If there was someone that had a need, whatever you could do to fill it, that you should you know, we were just raised by parents that, you know, they believe that everybody should be afforded opportunity and everybody should be afforded a loving family. And so we're just, I don't know, we're just big proponents of, of, uh, of our uprearing, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's usually how, that's usually how it works, which is, which is great. So, so for you, you know, what I know is there's a lot of people out there that lack that sort of confidence and conviction. What, what would you say to people like that? Get involved. Start small if, if you want to. If that's something that you're desiring to get involved, plug yourself in to make a difference. I tell people all the time, don't let it become a daunting task because so many people go, oh, can't do that. Can't take a risk. You know, you took a black kid into your house. What were you thinking? I'm like, oh, my mm. gosh, really? I mean, you know, we live in fear as a society. I, and I think that's just evolved over time just because of a of a, a, a massive abundant amount of things, but it has. And and I just, I, you know, I don't think that you should live in fear. I mean, we do, you got to get out of your comfort zone. I mean, we tell people all the time, you got two options. You can be in the game or on the sidelines. And we're a big proponent of being in the game. Mm. And just, I mean, you know, you have common sense, use your common sense, but, but doing nothing is just not a box that we allow our kids or our family and our friends to check. We just think that everyone should do something. I mean, if you're watching you and I right now and you're listening to us and you were able to tune in and figure this out and get on here, I mean, you got the ability to make a difference in someone's life. And it, we're all called to do that. I mean, people go, oh, that's not my responsibility. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. We're all in charge of each other. We're supposed to be a global giving community. And I mean, I, I basically think that we were put here to help make a difference in other people's lives. I mean, I, if you think that you were just put here to collect and get and amass, and I just, I don't know, we can't be friends because I just don't think that's what it's about. So yeah. I think it's about turning around and making a difference because there are so, so many people that just need a chance. And I just think that we ought to be able to provide more opportunities, um, hope, more uh, you know, hope, love, and opportunity for other people. And you just have no idea. I mean, I'm not telling you to go adopt and I'm not telling you to go uh, just do all these massive things. If you can, you should. But I am telling you that everyone should do something. And it, it, it may be as simple as, uh, you know, uh, carrying somebody's groceries into their house. But I am telling you that everyone should do something. Yeah. It's the, uh, you know, what I say to folks is that it's the fastest way to to keep depression away from you. Yes, absolutely. Because, because it's you know, infectious. And, and today there's, you know, there's a lot of people that are down and they feel you know, they, they take it all in because they're always thinking about themselves in many ways. But um, but I, I like how you said get involved, you know, because for me, when I hear get involved, that means it's more than just writing the check. It's getting involved. It's it's putting yourself in it. Right. Well, to give just an example or a perspective of that, I always tell people like you go into grocery stores or uh, libraries or whatever during the winter and they have these big boxes. If you have an extra coat, drop it in the box. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's great. Yeah. You know, if you got an extra coat, you should. But if you take that coat and you physically give it to the person that needs a coat, that will change you. And if it doesn't change you, there's something wrong with you. Because to see the expression on someone's face that needs a coat and it's it's, you know, that'll go. Oh, gosh, I need to go home and get. Oh, I got I got five more scarves and two pair of gloves. And oh, who can I find to give these to? And, and that's what happens when you become a giver. You, you know, you start small. And it just, you just, it just becomes infectious and you just want to do it more and more and more. It's kind of like I tell people the happiest time of the year is the holidays, whether it's, you know, Kwanzaa or Christmas or Hanukkah or, or whatever holiday you choose to, you know, to do, but it's the giving time of year and we give unconditionally and we give lovingly. And I'm like, if we do it during just that, why don't we do it all the time? I, I just don't understand why we just want to condense it down to this one snapshot every moment in time, every year, you know, let's, Let's make this something that we do all the time. So that's that's how you really can get started. Don't just drop the coat in the box and don't just write the check and give it, you know, 
take that and 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 actually go meet who you're going to help or get involved with them. You know, mentor someone, be a big brother, a big sister, teach someone to read, go to an elderly home, go to the Humane Society, get involved. I mean, whatever your passion is, whatever the drum you want to beat, just plug yourself into it. And, mm-hmm. and I, I think that you would just be blown away by, you'll just realize that you just want to, you know, do it more and more and more and more. So that, that, that's yeah. my, if, if, you know, if when people quit the take away the rub from you and I talking today, it's just plug yourself in and, and turn around and get involved because I just think that it would just blow your mind what you would change you, then you would reflect it to your family. And it just, it's, it has a ripple effect. It truly yeah. does. Yeah. I think some people too, they get jammed. They say, well, you know, I didn't come from a family like that, that did those kind of things. And it's like, well, but you can start now. You could be the the first to reestablish that line going forward. Yeah, it's got to start somewhere. Start with you. Uh, I mean, it has to start somewhere. And look, your kids aren't going to become uh, givers unless they see you. They're just going to em- you know emulate exactly what they see you doing. Mm-hmm. And so you need to. You've got to teach your children to be philanthropic. You've got to teach your children to be givers. They're going to watch everything that you do. And some go, I don't really like the direction my kid's going. I normally want to go, well, you probably should look at yourself in the mirror because they're just re- little reflections of you running around. So if you don't like their language or you don't like their attitude or you don't, because so they're learning, this is a learned behavior from somewhere. Mm-hmm. And, and so, you know, teach your kids to, to be givers and teach them to be kind, teach them to go and sit. You know, I mean, I tell my kids when they were growing up, I'd go, when you walk in the lunchroom, if you see a kid sitting by themselves, get your ass over there and sit with them. Yeah. I mean, be that kid because they're not sitting by themselves because they want to be sitting by themselves. And if they tell you that, they're not telling you the truth. And, and so it's just, you know, you have to have these conversations with these kids. You know, when they get out of the car in the morning, you know, say only positive, kind things, just whatever, you know, whatever it is that your ritual needs to be, you just have to instill it. And it's just to be over and over and over. You know, don't be bullying is at, it's just ridiculous the amount of bullying that's going on right now. And it's not young people. I'm not going on the fifth grade playground. I mean, this is everywhere. This is in social media, on the work, in the workforce, on the, it's just, it's everywhere that this going on. And so it's got to start with you. I mean, you, you know, it, it, we've got to be the ones to be positive and uplifting and inspiring. And then, and then hope that, you know, like I said a minute ago, it has a ripple effect. Yeah. Yeah. So th- it, it sounds like, again, that you're also very involved with your kids. Very involved with my kids. I don't think parenting will die until I'm they throw the first scoop of dirt on me. Now that I, you know, I don't, I'm sure on most days they don't like that, but I don't give a rat's ass. So yeah. um, I'm going to be a parent today. I die. My parents were that way, and and obviously we're very fortunate to have good kids. And but I mean, and and, and look, it's not just the the three that I have, but I mean we're involved with other people and other kids. And we try to be good role models and good you know, influences to them. And you know, I'll tell kids that we're involved with, no, you shouldn't do that or take that down off your social media right now. Or put, it's just, you know, people need kids, not adult, but both adults need it too. But, you know, we all need somebody that's the voice of reason. You know, we need yeah. someone that an accountability group. I mean, I'm a big proponent of having an accountability group and mm-hmm. you should be surrounded by people that hold you accountable. And if you don't like what they're saying, then, you know, you might need to tweak and adjust a little bit. But we all need someone to be accountable to, whether it's called parenting or whatever it is. Uh, Coaching. None of it, we all we all screw up. and We all make mistakes. And, and I just hope that, you know, everyone, um, you know, is fortunate enough to have people that will hold them accountable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for me, I, I'm a coach, so I hold people accountable for a living. Uh, and it's great because you could see what somebody's true potential is when they're held accountable to something as opposed to just, you know, letting it rip. And, you know, I do a little today, maybe a little tomorrow. Like you got to go all in on people, which is why I appreciate your message. Well, thank you. I, I do. And, and coaches have a tough, uh, right now you've got a tough, it's a thin line of, you know, yeah. uh, of that, that you guys walk and it's, 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 you know, it's tough. And, but there are so many young people that they're, they look up to their coaches, their coaches spend more time with them than their parents do. And so I was always a big proponent of knowing my kids coaches and, you know, I just always wanted them to be uh, positive influences on my children. And mm-hmm. there have been a few instances that I'm like, yeah, oh, man, you, you can't, can you clean your language up a little? And, you know, my kids are like, hey, you can't say that, mom. 
and I'm like, yeah, I said it, you know, I said it, yeah, yeah. but it's just, you know, I mean, you guys aren't um, beyond leading a little parenting as well, but you, it is yeah, a great responsibility. True. It is a, a coaching is a big responsibility. Yeah. You know, I love, I, I, as, again, I, I hear so many themes with you when you speak, but I love how you're not afraid to put it out there. Like so many <laughs> gets people, me in trouble sometimes. Trust me, it gets me in trouble. But you know what? But you, but you keep coming back for more, and that's where so many don't. Right? They'll do something once, they may get a little slap, and they never come back. So for you, that you know, you uh, you either like it, I or or you again, it's who you are, which I I think is probably accurate. Yeah, my poor husband. We had our 39th year anniversary yesterday, and okay. bless him, he's he's had to deal Congrats. with it for 39 years, and he's just, he'll just be like. If someone will say something and he'll look at I, and when his head kind of, he'll go, don't, you're going to say something. You're going to say something. Yeah. And, 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 you know, like it's, it, for example, it, baseball's going on and, 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 and unfortunately Ole Miss uh, lost last night. Mm. Um, but we, we, we made super regionals, had a, did a great run and we had a lot of injured players, but it, they had a, a really good run. But early on, we were uh, several weeks ago, we were at a baseball game and somebody was just screaming at one of our players. And I turned around, and I went, you have no idea what you're saying. You have no, sh- you don't even know what you're talking about because I knew the scenario. And so I, I said, let me tell you what really happened. And so then I kind of walked this person. I didn't know this person. And I, and I want to go, now do you feel stupid? Cause you said you feel stupid. And, 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 you know, and, and they kind of laughed and goes, well, I guess I probably should think before I say something. Well, yeah, we all should. I'm as guilty as that as anybody. I should yeah. definitely think before I open my mouth, but poor Sean deals with it. He's just like, oh, and you're going to do it. I'm going to leave. And he just, you know, kind of, so he, he's been very, very uh, wonderful th- th- through the 39 years because he says all the time, you really, really need mouth management. You really need it. You really yeah. do. So, Yeah. But you know what? It, it's the yin and yang though, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, hey, send in the pit bull. Exactly. <laughs> no watch her go. Watch her go. So uh, again, you know, the, I, there's a portion of the audience here that um, is either A, in business or B, aspiring to be in business. I know that's a part, a big part of your life, but were you always business oriented, entrepreneurial? from your youth or was it something that came to you later? No, I've always, my father insisted there was, it was a work ethic. I mean, you, you, you work and you get results. So I think at 14, I started working at a clothing store called the limited Mm. and worked on Mondays and and Thursday nights for like four hours. Uh, And I, and the first time I got my first check, I went, wow, this is great. I got, I got my own money. And so I've always been very driven to, to work. And I've always been a little bit creative. I, I have a degree in interior design and I was an interior designer for many, many years in my first life and had a wonderful business, but my life's taken a little bit of a different direction in the last several years. And that that's okay too. I mean, there's nothing wrong with change, but no, Sean and I are both, uh, unbelievably driven in business and we play off each other and we do business things together. And which is great because I mean, you know, your, your marriage is a work in process and 39 years. I mean, we work at our marriage just like we do like anything, whether it was our educational process or our job opportunities or just whatever we, mm. we, we think you have to work on your marriage every single day. And, uh, you know, he is a, an amazing businessman and he's, Maneuver the franchise world for many, many years in the fast food business. And, and so that's kind of our primary focus right now. And we, um, we're in the young brands. And so it's, he's been in it for 30 years. And mm. so business and, and he's, and he's kind of involved in a mentorship program right now because so many people don't understand how to get involved in the fast food world or if they can get involved with it and what the steps are. And so he is such, I'm very, he's such a giver and, and he just, is kind of getting involved in a program right now where he is going to mentor people on how you can get involved in the franchise world because it's a little bit like an enigma or people are like, how do, where do I even start? You know, because yeah. I've called that 800 number on the window at the drive through and it didn't get me anywhere. Well, you know, yeah, that's correct. It's probably just there for, you know, because it's a, a head fake. But um, <laughs> so, yeah, so he's kind of passionate about right there. I mean, I said, you know, well, we're in the fourth quarter of life and you're going to crank this up. And he said, I just really feel like this is the direction God wants me to go. And I just feel like I have a lot to offer people mm. that want to get into business that aren't afforded this opportunity. You know, they don't have, uh, a family upbringing of it or, or their family as in their family wasn't in that business right. or they don't even have an opportunity to know about how to do this. And so 
Um, I just admire the heck out of them for it because it's, it's not going to be easy, but you know, nothing that's worthwhile really ever is easy. But good for him because I think that there are so many people that need this opportunity, and I'm very proud of him for stepping up and you know, hopefully making it available to many people to make a difference because it can make a difference in, you know, people's lives for years to come. Yeah. Yeah. He's moving. I call that uh, moving into the legacy phase of life where you're, you're really getting to help people, mentor people, build people, educate people. And, and really, if they take to that, they can change their life and should change their life. And then it, it again, it's that trickle down effect, but you're you know, you're a major player in, in making that happen for people outside of themselves. So well, that's, he's one of the, he's a good guy. He's, you know, there's, there's a lot of good guys in this world. And my husband is definitely, he's definitely one of them. I'm very blessed because, you know, he, he believes that you can either, you're either a giver or a taker. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, which is, it's, it's really very, very true when you just really just where the rubber meets the road. Yeah. And so good for him because this has been, you know, he's just been over the years questioned and questioned about it. And, and how do I do this? Or where can I plug myself in? Or where do I even start? Or even if I get started, how do I make, sh- how, how do I become successful at it? Mm. And so it, it is, I mean, it takes a lot. You know, I think the first thing he tells them is or, that, you know, you got to be willing to put a lot of time in the gym. I mean, I, you know, he worked, we had one store for many, many years in Meridian, Mississippi. We had no mm. footprint there. It was just a one-off that Taco Bell wanted to get rid of 30 plus years ago. And I think he worked 60, 70 hours every single week in the stores. He wow. chopped the tomatoes, diced the lettuce. And it's, you know, he says it's hard work. And if you're not willing to put the time in, then this isn't for you. But if you are, you know, it, it can change your life. So uh, this, is, this is great. And I'm going to, I may watch him from the lawn chair. <laughs> I'm not sure where I'm going to be in this, but but I'm cheering him on all the way. So yeah, I'm and I'm guessing you know uh, for you guys, you bring a lot of these leadership principles and life principles, you know, to those to those franchise locations and those teams that are running them. We try. We've got great our 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 team members are amazing, and mm. and we are so blessed to have great people that um, that are involved with us. And I'm I thank the Lord for them every single night because they're they really they get it, and we we are there for each other, especially through this crazy uh, last few eighteen months that we've lived in, and yeah. you know, just everybody checking on everybody and making sure that you know, everybody was healthy and if they weren't what we could do to help. And so it's, it's really, it's, it's really great when you build up, when you take, you know, 30 years, but you build up a, a community of, com- of caring individuals. It's, it's really, it's amazing. Yeah. And it's refreshing to hear you say that because the number one complaint I hear from many business owners and leaders is my people, my people, my people over wow. and over and over again. You know, how have you dealt with your people. I mean, that mm. sounds so, you know, yeah. I mean, you, you know, you've got, you've got to lead by example. And if you're not, you know, in there with them and checking on them and knowing about them and, you know, if, are they getting married or do they have kids or your kids, in, you know, in high school, or do they need, do they have backpacks? Do you need new shoes? I mean, whatever the it is, but you know, you've got to, you've got to, got to plug yourself in. I mean, you just can't be up here and not know what's going on. So. Yeah. And I'm guessing, you know, there are folks in your organization that you gave to and they and they left. Has that ever oh, happened? Absolutely. To you? Oh gosh, certainly. I mean, that's just the nature of of the fast food world. I mean, there there is, you know, there is turnover. Hmm. But, you know, I think your goal is to have more retention than you do turnover. So I think they strive for that every day. And especially right now, you know, where we're living with it's just, you know, it's just so hard. Everyone is is shorthanded. I mean, we've yeah. got to we got to get back to work. I mean, we're gonna this nation is gonna crumble if we don't all get up and get back to work. So, yeah. this is we've got to you know get up and plug ourselves in and and start making a difference. Or I'm afraid of, and I'm not afraid. I'm afraid what's from globally what's going to happen to us people coming in to. I don't know. I, I'm not a political person and I don't know the dynamics of all that. I wish I did, yeah. but I, I just try to do what I am. But I do think we need to get up and get back involved. And and we we really have got to uh, start moving all our wagon in the same direction and cheering each other on and being proponents of each other instead of just bullying and downgrading and pulling people down and, you know, mean spirited, and unkind. We got to we got to flip it. We got to flip the switch and, yeah. and I'll start moving in the same direction. 
And I also think too, you know, inspiring people to A, work and B, get back to work so they could experience, you know, the feeling that you mentioned earlier about, you know, that first paycheck at the limited, you know, it feels good to put labor into something and work into something and hard into something and then have a, you know, uh, a benefit, you know, called your pay and then do something great with that. Yeah. I've always thought there's such a big difference in a handout versus a hand up. Yeah. And uh, I just, I think that that we all need to be very cognizant. It's a fine line, but you need to figure it out. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that because that was something that I wanted to touch on too, before, before we wrapped up, you know, I think a lot of people think that by giving that they are giving a hand out, but how do you say, what's the difference in your mind between the hand out and the hand up? In your language. Well, I, mean, it's, I tell people all the time, too, much is given, much is required. So, you know, it's it's one scenario to pull up to a red light and there's a, someone, an individual holding a sign that needs help to, to drop a few dollars in. Because I always say, you know, God will judge your heart if you have it to give and you don't give. But he'll also judge their heart if they take it and they shouldn't. You really should worry about your heart. You should be the giver. You should give a couple of dollars. That's a, that's just a, you know, that's not a massive an investment that you're making there. Now, if, you know, if you've got someone that says, oh, I need $500 to keep my utilities on, or, you know, I need $300 to pay my rent, then, you know, you have to do your due diligence. I mean, we, we do because there are people out there, unfortunately, that will request and, and when their, their needs really aren't there. And there's people that, on the, I, I say, well, they're like professionals at scamming or whatever it is. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, do your due diligence, do some vetting, but there are so many people that the needs are there and it doesn't take much. I mean, it may take just a little bit of your time to ask a few questions. And I think, you you know, you can figure it out by asking whether the needs are, are you know, authentic and real. And then, then, you know, you have to make the decision call and, and to plug yourself or not plug yourself in. Yeah. But we, you know, we do, we vet the request and then we, jump in with both feet and then, you know, one thing leads to another. And then it's so great when you've been involved and to actually see people rise up and get back on their feet. And they're just so excited. And you just see them just wanting to help other people. And you're like, wow, they're barely making it, but they're wanting now help somebody else. Yeah. So those are the results that are just game changers and will melt your heart. Yeah. I love that. One of my sayings that I use is success is an energy. Oh, absolutely. And, and it's it's like what you're talking about, right? You just keep putting in, putting in, putting in, and 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 it almost becomes this unstoppable machine that keeps putting out good stuff. Yeah. So yeah, that's absolutely. yeah, it's very cool. So I have one last question for you. I always ask this to anybody that comes on the show. I call it the becoming a champion show. I feel like we're all on a journey to become our champion self. What does the word champion mean to you? And it can't be an old miss rebels win. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> it can't be like a, a sugar. Uh, you know, I, I think being uh, when when I when someone says you're a champion, Im- the immediate thing that comes to my mind is I made a difference, mm-hmm. and, and that's what comes to my mind. And if if I can lay my head on the pillow at night and go, I made today, I made a difference, then I consider that you know being a champion because I you know that's just that's just that's what when my feet hit the floor, that's one of the first things that I do is how can I make a difference today. And um, that's just the way we roll. It may not work for everybody, but it certainly is what we do in, in our world. And, and to me, if you, if you lay your head on your pillow, you close your eyes, and you know that day that you made a difference, man, mm. you're a big time champion. Yeah, I love that. And, and you have purpose every day. I try. I appreciate you saying that. I mean, we do. I mean, we, we really, really try. And some days we don't. Some days are not good days. Um, you know, you got good days and bad days, but man, you got a lot of days in between them. So get up, get going and, and you know, try to make a difference. I love it. I love it. Leanne, this is awesome. Thank you for, uh, Thank thanks for you. coming out and hanging with me today. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Well, I hope you guys love that one as much as I did. I'm fired up right now. Some great takeaways that I have is you got to get in the game. You can't sit on the sidelines. And one thing I love that Leanne said was you can't, have friends that want to sit on the sidelines as well. You got to have people around you that all want to get in the game. You got to get in the game. You put points on the board and you win when you are in the game. Too many people today sit on the sidelines and it never works. And they end up frustrated, anxious, and saying, what happened? What happened? How come it didn't happen for me? 
And that's why it didn't happen for them. The other thing is too, you got to be positive. You got to believe, even if other people don't believe in you, you got to believe in yourself. So you got to stay positive and you got to believe in what it is that you could do. So great show today with Leanne. I loved it. I hope you did too. And if you did, please make sure you share it. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. And I hope you can join us next week for another great episode of the Becoming a Champion Show. And never forget, you are a champion. This is Coach Dana Cavalia, and I'll see you later.